Hi, this is Auntie Sandra, and I'll be reading I, Crocodile by Fred Marcelino. Oh, what a contented crocodile I used to be. Wallowing around in the slimy green water, snoozing on the mud banks in the hot desert sun, and scaring the life out of anything that wandered by. But my greatest joy? <laughs> eating! Well, actually, overeating. I had the perfect diet an endless variety of delectable fish. All sorts of succulent water birds, plus a few reptiles on the side. Distant cousins only. However, unlike certain pathetic creatures who have to chase after the next meal, I always ate in style. Dinner? <laughs> It came to me. And why not? I am an aristocrat. A direct descendant of the noble crocodiles of ancient Egypt. In fact, the great pharaoh themselves treated my ancestors like gods. Idol worship, <laughs> I just love it. That's why I always resisted eating people, even though they do look awfully tasty. Guess I'm just a sentimental type. Ah, those are the blissful days indeed. But sadly, they came to an abrupt end on, to be precise, August 17, 1799. Who should decide to come to Egypt? Napoleon! You know, that French guy who thought he owned the world? What was going on? An invasion? <laughs> More like a raid! And in the center of it all, This little man barking orders. Mummies? I want mummies! Napoleon cried. And that sphinx in an obelisk. Make it a big one. That temple over there. Just what I need. Palm trees too. Don't forget palm trees. And a crocodile, he bellowed. I must have a crocodile. Suddenly, some bozos with funny hats and a big net were all over me. What a cruel and abrupt departure for my mud bank. I scarcely had a chance to give a parting glance to my beloved home, much less finish my scrumptious dessert, pink flamingo. And what a beastly ocean voyage. Even crocodiles can get seasick. For the first time in my life, I couldn't eat a thing. I just picked a little. And after two wretched weeks at sea, we finally dropped anchor. Then an endless coach ride. Was anyone keeping track of all the meals I was missing? Last up, Paris. There in the gardens, I was installed in a fountain. How humiliating to find myself living in what amounted to a fancy bathtub. On the other hand, it was rather flattering to receive so much attention. Napoleon showed me off to everyone. I was an overnight sensation, an instant celebrity, the dose of the Tuileries, the darling of the empire. Soon all Paris was doing the crocodile walk. Yes, yes, very nice. But what about dinner? I hadn't had a decent meal in ages. Well, fashions change quickly in Paris. In no time at all, Le Fantastique Crocodile Egyptienne was old news. Napoleon found new amusements. Visitors were few. And my diet? <laughs> Don't ask. Then one morning, Napoleon and some guests strode idly by. Is that beast still here, sir? inquired one of the ladies. Off to the kitchen with him. Crocodile pie with Egyptian onions. It's all the rage in Cairo. 
A brilliant idea, cried the emperor. We'll have him for dinner tonight. What? To think that kings once bowed before crocodiles? Now here was his low life ready to eat one? I spent a day nervously pacing the rim of my tub. Then, oh no, a loutish fellow with a cleaver showed up. I felt faint. But wait, a ballooning mishap? Napoleon in peril? My chance to flee! Boldly seizing the opportunity, I made my escape. Now what? Murky water? Slime-covered walls? Dank-fetid air? <laughs> yes, lucky me! The sewers of Paris! Crocodile heaven! Uh, wait a minute. What about dinner? Not to mention breakfast, lunch, and snacks. After all, I was still stuck in Paris. What was a starving crocodile supposed to eat? Yummy! Now what's for dessert? The End, I Crocodile by Fred Marcelino.